uh, making any sort of tasting room? <coughs> there is half the building is divided. The north half, the older building, is going to be a tasting room environment only. And what are the hours? That's going to be Thursday and Friday evenings, 5 p.m. till 10, 9, 9. 5 to 9. Saturday is going to be 10 a.m. to 11. And Sunday, we said, was, I keep forgetting this, 12 to, 4. 12 to 4. And the Sundays will probably not take place out of season when the ferry traffic goes down as well. And for the record, how many people capacity will that be? For the tasting room? Yes. What do we say? 24 seats. Plus the outside patio, which gives us a total. That's a 10. 20. 20. 20. Yeah. 40 I 40 mean, 40. the reality is we don't ever anticipate that kind of a crowd because people come in, taste, buy a bottle, leave. Nobody's going to be coming in and bellying up to the bar, spending four hours there. Um, the little bit of a larger space we've seen from other facilities. Uh, they do occasionally want to get a group in for a bachelor or bachelorette party and have a little private function in there. So we thought having a little more room would be better than just being cramped. Now, what are you intending to do in the outside space? Are you planning on having a piece of music out there? Are you no. Music, if we do anything like that, is going to be indoors. Uh, I think uh, opening ourselves up to outdoor music, we'd have to come and have another meeting here in order to do that. Yeah. They may not go over too well in a residential area. Right, so we've taken that into consideration. The back half of this building where the tasting room is, there are currently two 10-foot roll-up doors. Uh, what we wanted to put in there were two glass roll-up doors. If for not so much uh, utilizing the is it indoor-outdoor space, but also enabling us to open that whole space up to fresh air too, which just makes a little bit of a nicer feel. You know, our tours that we're going to offer to people are obviously going to start out on the patio because we're going to have our little berry patch that's going to be a proprietary uh, item in one of our products. So we need to start talking about what goes into the product. So starting outdoors is nice, and then going inside, and then ending up with a cocktail on your way out with a couple bottles under your arm is like. What kind of staffing are we uh, talking about for both the manufacturing side of the process and the? Initially, uh, the, the business can run relatively on the lean side. So within the first year, we anticipate being five to six people. Uh, realistically, by year two, uh, we could be up to 20 people, but not all inside people. We do have some incentives that we're working with with the Brookhaven Industrial Development Agency. So we do have certain employment objectives to meet with them to grow this business. Uh, but some of that additional staff are going to be people like outside salespeople, brand managers, people who go out and represent the product and sell it. So we may have 20, but there may not be ever 20 under the same roof at the same time working there. Technically, the distilling operation can be handled completely by two people for the type of production that we're looking to do. You'll have a, um, an office space inside for, we're talking about um, manufacturer's reps, so to speak, that you will have your tradespeople go out to different <clears throat> businesses. Yeah, we're, not, we're not dedicating office space for that purpose. If I were to call sales staff in for a meeting or something, it's going to be a product-related meeting. We're going to be talking about it in the manufacturing space. I'm thinking parking, and then you're also talking about bachelor and bachelorette parties. Well, as a possibility, any kind of private event. You know, we've got a fair amount of parking. I think we've set for 27 parking spaces there. Um, there is the railroad a half a block away. I don't anticipate that parking lot ever being that packed. We're not going to put 100 people in a space for 25. Just want to put that on the record. Understood. Um, I want to drill down into this tasting room for the record. So in the tasting room, you have your product, your product only. And mixers to make cocktails with them. So uh, for an example, if I was to order a gin and tonic, you can have the tonic. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. you can have the tonic. But I can't go in there and order a beer. That is correct. The only way you could order a beer is if we wanted to offer another New York State made product on tap. What's so your plan? Not to. So your plan is we're going to have a tasting room for my product. That is correct. So we're not going to have a bar. We're going to have a true tasting room. That is correct. Just like uh, how you go out east into the wine, wine country and you go to Bell's Farms, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get their wine. My job is to sell my product that we make. If it takes a little bit of tonic water or a little bit of Campari to make a cocktail that you like, then that's what's there, and that's it. 
and in serving that cocktail, again, the base of the product is what we make. The plan indicates there's a kitchen on site. What happens in the kitchen? Well, the kitchen is there to prepare small plates, and that's twofold. Number one, we're required by law under the Craft Act and the Farm Distillery to offer some kind of food to the people when they're tasting. Um, traditionally, if you're going to offer somebody the ability to purchase a 10 to $12 cocktail to taste, you're going to want something other than peanuts in a bowl. So even if it's somebody in the back preparing a nice little small cheese platter or a small tapas type of plate, uh, we're not serving full meals. You're not going to come in and come here for dinner. Uh, this is just to make it a little bit more upscale than the typical, you know, tasting tour. But some food preparation is going to occur on site and it's going to be cooked, I assume, or it could be cooked, or not. It could be cooked on site, yes. It is plans for a very small kitchen. And again, my apologies, some of these questions actually probably all of the rest are out of ignorance. Does the distilling process create any discernible noise? Nothing. No noise. So walking totally down the street, not going to hear it. Don't even hear a gurgling. Back to the 